Hi everyone, this is Jason Burak of Wall Street for Main Street and this is your video blog for Monday, January 3rd, 2011. Happy New Year's to everyone. I hope everyone had a very uh, nice and safe and fun uh, New Year's weekend. Um, I know I did. Uh, I would like to talk to you guys today about a rare earth stock. Uh, I think we're going to call this the next rare earth rocket. Uh, this company is called Great Western Minerals. I think it's GWGMGF. I think on the pink sheets over the counter. Uh, I could look that up for you later. I'll post a link to their website in the info under the blog. But what I wanted to talk about in uh, Great Western Minerals is give you guys some background on the stock. Um, the stock right now, it was a penny stock around 30 cents a share. And believe it or not, there was an institution or a hedge fund or something that was shorting the stock very heavily. So the stock was on the, reg uh, the SEC's regulation SHO list. And what that means is there's a very high short interest in the stock. Um, the, as rare earth uh, metals prices have increased and the Chinese in the last couple weeks have continued to reduce their uh, export quotas on rare earths, and in fact they've reduced them over 30% in the last couple weeks, they've announced uh, reductions of that much, then uh, Great Western Mineral Stock has literally gone from about 30, 40 cents a share. It was in a trading range due to the uh, short short interest, and now it's in a short squeeze. So I think this is a very good opportunity here. I think it's going a lot higher. I'll talk about uh, the fundamentals of Great Western Minerals a little bit more uh, right now. Uh, Rare Earths expert Jack Lifton, who uh, started the website High Technology Metals Research, uh, tech, Technology Metals, and he went and bought over 41,000 shares of Great Western Minerals about six or seven months ago on the open market. So that's one of the few companies he actually went and bought you know, shares of on the open market. So that, I, that I think, speaks volumes. Uh, Great Western Minerals has uh, plans for vertical integration. Right now, they have two processing facilities that are very profitable and are actually expanding production. Those processing facilities, which take the uh, the rare earths and they, you know, provide value and they turn them into like specialty alloys and high strength neodymium ion boron magnets and other things that defense and aerospace and uh, you know hybrid electric vehicles and other clean tech technologies will need in the future. Those two facilities are in London and the other one is in Detroit, Michigan. So those things are very good. They're expanding capacity. They're already profitable. Those are two keys and those are highly sought after. In fact, Molycore has already tried to buy those two processing facilities. Uh, Great Western also, according to Jack Lifton's website in an article from a couple months ago, also has two of the top 15 rare earth deposits in the entire world. And that is because they have a higher percentage grade of heavies inside their deposits. One is in South Africa, and that one's the most advanced. That one was already mined and has a good amount of thorium in the deposit as well. And the other deposit is an advanced exploration stage one where they've been drilling a lot of holes up in Canada. So uh, Great Western is the only company, the only rare earths company, that has two of the top 15 deposits in the world as voted by rare earths expert uh, Jack Lifton on his website there. So I would strongly encourage you to go and check out the Great Western Minerals uh, stock. Uh, it's about 65 cents now, so the stock has moved up a lot in the last three weeks, but I still think it's extremely undervalued relative to the other rare earths companies, the other rare earths juniors, like an Avalon or a Rare Element Resources. Uh, Great Western Minerals has a lot more going for it than those other two companies, a lot more. So you get the vertical integration strategy, you get two profitable processing facilities, and those things are expensive. And on top of all the other things I mentioned, you know, where there's a short squeeze developing, and I think the shorts haven't really covered that much yet. So uh, I think Great Western has a lot more room to run as the shorts continue to cover. And I also think Great Western will be one of the top buyout candidates for sure, uh, just because of the processing facilities, because a company like Molycore, which just did a joint venture with Hitachi, to look into uh, building more processing facilities here in the United States will deem that it is cheaper to go out and acquire processing facilities and expand them because they're already, you know, trained employees there and stuff like that than go and, you know, build completely new ones for scratch. Building new rare earth processing facilities is looking right now at seeing some of the uh, estimates there of upwards of $500 million for the processing facilities, not for the mines. So 
it's a separate, you know, humongous expense for the mines and then a humongous separate expense on top of that for the processing facilities. So I think Great Western Minerals has a humongous advantage because they're already expanding those processing facilities over 50% now due to increased demand for their products from the people who are buying them. So it looks very good for Great Western Minerals. Uh, I expect the stock over the next year or two to easily eclipse a dollar. Um, if the company was marketed better already, and in my opinion, the only reason it, the stock price is not higher is because the company is poorly marketed and it is not listed on a major American exchange. If the company was better marketed by their management, they would already be listed on American exchange because I think the company is better than a lot of the other rarest juniors that have gone up crazily. So I think there's a lot of value there still relative to the other rarest juniors in Great Western Minerals. And I think you deserve, uh, I think it belongs in your portfolio, at least a thousand shares, just buy and hold a thousand shares and uh, set it aside guys. So um, that's all for today, folks. Um, everyone have a great week. I'm going to be watching some bowl games. This, These are the meaningful bowl games. Now we got the BCS bowl game tonight. we got my alma mater, Virginia Tech, playing. So uh, go Hokies. And uh, looks like the Chinese are playing with the rare earths as a way to, you know, as a political tool, like I said in my podcast last night. It looks like the U.S. is trying to print China off the dollar peg to force high inflation in China to get China to take the dollar peg off. And China is retaliating by not only not buying that much more uh, treasuries, but also restricting exports of rare earths. So it looks like we have currency wars and trade wars that could escalate into far worse, folks. Um, rare earths are very important, and they appear to be a very important political tool that China is using to exert its policy aims geopolitically. Okay, thanks, guys.